Well, that's a great restart by Pedro Lamy. Look at what he's pulled out. He's not going to be under any challenge as he comes down to turn number seven. So that means he can at least breathe a little bit. Dindal Capello, on the other hand, is the one who's looking in his mirrors. And he can't now divide... He has to divide his attention between trying to chase the leader down and defend where necessary from Mark Chenier, who's in the second of the Peugeot. And in some ways, Jeremy, that's the hardest thing of all when you're trying to do two things at once. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you're, you're busy out there. It's the good news is on a restart, particularly when the prototypes at the front of the field, they they finally got a bit of clear track for maybe a couple of laps before they come around to start lapping, lapping the slowest car to back of the field. Probably three or four laps, I suppose. But it's uh, it's it's good now, and they're taking advantage of this clear track. Now behind Pani, uh, behind Pagano, I think is Guillaume Moreau in the sixth place car he's a lap uh, up, i think he's just a lap off the lead isn't he at the moment in the york racing car that is that one yeah, there he is. With the nice orange, orange roll hoop and he's doing very nicely indeed and he's got a really good restart unfortunately he's just fallen off the lead lap and dindo capello is trying to hold on to Ooh. second position there's going to be a touch here oh. surely yes there is oh my goodness me that is mark chenier taking stand by crew on stand by and that was Houghton Haynes calling the crew on standby, and that is Mark Chenier taking Dindo Capello out of the right race. Right rear zero, right rear zero, box this lap, box this lap. Well, Jeremy that Shaw has a, has a very, very big frown on his face and a furrowed brow there. Chenier looks like he's gotten away with that relatively unscathed. There's a right rear puncture to Dindo Capello, and you already heard the Audi team being told what they were expecting the number that he called out was for parts for the right rear they have a, a code they have a code as to what they think they might need when things are coming on and they go to a particular part of the pit box to get those there is the michelin tire carcass that was ripped away from the rim you know it's what's interesting is, is how we oh, see this wow Oh, we've well, the seen Peugeot hasn't got off first. We haven't seen these tyre problems. You know, yes, there's contact, but we don't normally see tyres coming apart like we're seeing today, John. Yeah, very hot out there, of course. Now, it's scrambled down in the Peugeot pit and scrambled down in the Audi pit as well. It'd be interesting to see what Bob Barfield, our race director, makes of that. Dendo seemed to give way and pull out and think he had room. Let's go down to Rick Tabril. Rick? Yeah, first they put the fuel in, now they're going to go ahead and change the tire. The question is whether there was any other damage. At this point in time, they have not seen anything that appears to see like they're looking towards any other bigger problems. It was just the flat tire on the right front. They're looking along now. On the right rear, they've got a, they're tearing away some of the bodywork. They're looking at some of the issues in the right rear. But they're going to send them back out. Meanwhile, the Peugeot had also come in. I think he had a flat tire as well. And now it looks like he has gone behind the wall, so the Audi gets back out while the Peugeot had to go behind the wall. And he broke the speed limit on the way in as well, did Mark Genet, so he's going to get pinged. Yeah, but why's for, he got behind No, he's got yeah. stuck. He's asking... He's, Can't he's make asking, that turn, can he? Yeah, and he's asking his team in French for directions. He's it's a broken a steering arm, perhaps. I think he might have, yeah. Jeremy. I think that's a very good pick up there. Let's have a look at that front. Oh, yes, look at the angle of the front rim. It should be flat or cambered out. Good. And it's cambered back in. Go straight to the tent. Wow. Uh, and he's going to get pinged at least for a stop goal penalty for his pit lane infraction once he's come back out again, at least. Jeremy, talk us through this coming into the braking area. Dindo goes defensive early on. That's fine for now. Absolutely right. And uh, Mark Janet there makes a, a good... He gets to the inside. He lunges down the inside here. And you're at that point in the, in the road, you, you, you've got to kind of turn in. I think Janet there tried to get out of it, he didn't did. he? And then, he, then the car got a little bit sideways. He overcorrected. And that's when he took out... Uh, the uh, Audi of Christensen. So, Jade was Hello. trying to do the right thing, but uh, he made that decision too late. And uh, I think that was definitely, yeah, it was. Uh, well, if you're going to call an avoidable Pat accident, I don't know. Yes, yes. If you're going to call Pat Long's an avoidable accident, that's an avoidable accident. He didn't need to be there. He needs to come up and watch. There, here's Dindo. Ooh, you can hear that thud. Yeah, it's quite a quite a quite an impact between those two, and, and that was re as a result of of uh, Janay losing the car over the bumps under braking there, and he kind of overcorrected, and then it just turned sharp left right into the right rear wheel of of uh, Dindo Capello. 